One of the things that I wanted to say as a macro idea is that all of us belong to this bizarre tent that's fake called Asian America. Right. Mm. Right? And it has so many different kinds of people, right. so many different histories, and also so many different generations. When I went to Yale, having grown up in Queens, New York, I met white people. Mm. I was like, I didn't even know what a white person was, because everybody was Italian or Jewish or Polish or... I mean, they were just something, but they weren't this idea of whiteness. Mm. And I didn't really even, even understand white supremacy until I went to Yale, because everybody had an ethnicity and an immigrant history in Queens, New York. Who went to Min's point about this idea of whether it's a misnomer to say Asian American or we are Asian American, but then when you say I'm from Pakistan or I'm Pakistani and Indian, mm -hmm. like, do you think people necessarily think that that's the right kind of diversity or it's the right kind of minority in terms of how we refer to the bigger diaspora of Asian American? When I was applying to universities in the United States, I did find it interesting that in all the applications, there was no box for me. Oh. And there was actually no box that said South Asian, which is how I identified myself. And somebody said, what's your ethnicity? Mm -hmm. And I remember going to my dad and saying, wait, wait, wait what are we? Yeah. And I remember when I, was, I worked for Hillary Clinton when she ran for president in 2008, our campaign manager, one day we were having a conversation, it was right at the beginning of the campaign, and she says, you know, we need more diversity on the plane. And I look around, and I'm like, you're like, hey, I'm actually, I'm the traveling chief of staff, like, on this presidential campaign for the first woman running for president, and without batting an eyelash, not even hesitating, she's like, oh, you don't count. Oh, wow. But she was right. I didn't count, because in 2008, the d right kind of diversity was not Asian American diversity, because all of our communities, and I say that to everybody at this table, we're not voting in large enough numbers to make a difference wow. in any state. And that's why, for me, to find this incredible amount of pride that in 2020, how South Asian American communities, East Asian American communities, Arab American communities actually voted in large enough numbers and that in certain states carried. Uh, Georgia. Georgia. Yep. Georgia's a perfect example. So my mom always had this concept that being an American meant being pure white. That's what she would tell me. She's like, pure white people, that is what America is. Pure white? Pure white. Wow. That was the thinking. When my mom became a citizen. I was like, ma, you're going to vote, right? And she was like, my vote doesn't count. I'm like, who told you that? You're a U.S. citizen. Of course your vote counts. I feel like for the longest time, older immigrants felt that their voice didn't count, even though they were U.S. citizens, so they didn't vote. It's so important that we're heard. Are we being heard? So when Senator Warnock had a runoff, like, I dropped everything. Yeah. I dropped absolutely everything. And I went to Georgia because I said, if I can get 500 Korean Americans to come vote, right? Like, I can make a difference. And this idea that whiteness equals America yep. is a construction. That's correct. Which we can actively dismantle with our presence and also our speech, which is something that's important to say because not everybody in our community wants to talk. Like, I would rather not talk. I'm perfectly happy just to admire you people. <laughs> <laughs>